definitely can remember this. Yes! Yeah. Were any of you here 25 years ago? Yes! Yeah. Well, I mean, you've kept your hair well, that's fantastic. Um, it's, it's amazing, 25 years ago, Chris, my missus, rented a, a bus, a 1947 bus, and brought us all here. My brother was a compere, sadly he can't be here tonight. Many of the people who, who were on that night can't, can't be here, but a lot of them can, um, including my mate Ralph McTell, who's, 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 who's going to be here. David Swarbrick can't be here. Raise a glass for sport, I never know whether to look up or down. <laughs> you know, when we do that thing. But um, it's great, I've got a, a, a special t shirt that Gareth Williams, who runs our property festival now, uh, sent for me. Gareth's in Australia, and uh, Gareth, you know, he knows I'm kind of old and have quite a few senior moments, so I think the t shirt's relevant. It's, it's got my name on it. <laughs> And it's got a picture of a base, which is what I'm supposed to do. Uh, so thanks to Gareth. And um, we're going to start the evening's proceedings off with uh, two of my best friends, Anthony John Clark and La Belle Julia, uh, Julia Porter, who are coming to do a couple of the songs. So uh, let's see it for Anthony and Julia. Stage, but it's the hand dryer in the toilet. <laughs> Don't you smile like that? She thought you'd be younger. <laughs> Stops him getting out of the house. So, uh, happy birthday to all you fellow Scorpios. Hey, Jeff, sorry. That's okay. It's also your birthday as well, but you don't realize it. That's her gag, not mine. <laughs> It's just the music that 
that you enjoyed as a child? Peggy, you've been answering the door in a dressing gown. You, who was born to be wild. <laughs> Backstage, and I think they've invented a new word for you. Then said, "Well, we were out one night in the pub, and we were all pegged." <laughs> <laughs> this is a celebration of, uh, of a man, of course, but it's also a celebration of the band. That I was growing up in Belfast in uh, the early 70s, and I discovered women, and I discovered music, and I discovered Fairport Convention. But I also discovered that there was bands that would come to play in Belfast, and there were bands that wouldn't. And just for us to say goodbye to you and thank Dave very much for letting us play here. Uh, Dave features in the last line of each one of these verses, and we'd like you to increase the volume on each of those last choruses. Would you do that for me? Are you sure? Shall I write to you? <laughs> starts on the 
ferry between Liverpool and Ireland, and it finishes at 27 minutes past nine next Thursday night. Here's the chorus. Years ago, not now. Balcony. We've got whiskey in our pocket, a little change inside our coats. Fourteen euros and one Irish say. We hear a band playing somewhere, but you know from here I cannot see them. This ship must be much bigger than we thought. We saw Fairport at the 
Ilster Lord. We saw Ralph McTell at the Ilster Lord. We saw you at the Ilster Lord. You should be ashamed of yourself. Do you know that was years ago? take it with you. So uh, I bought myself a guitar and uh, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, I, I've been lucky to play in some great bands uh, in, in my uh, career. And I, I use the word loosely. Um, and from early days in Birmingham up to you know, playing with a, a band called Jethro Toll, which we're uh, don't get excited, Ian's not here. Uh, nor Martin. They're all out working to pay the mortgages. <laughs> um, but luckily, they were very kind to me in Jethro's home. They gave me lots of money at the time, which I, I never earned with Fairport because we, were, we did poverty rock. Um, <laughs> and in fact, still do from time to time. <clears throat> but it, it enabled me to, uh, to set up a studio which, which we had in, in, uh, in Barford St. Michael. And it enabled us to record people that we liked, uh, namely the Fairports, we made lots of albums in it, in fact, and still do at, at Woodworm. And, um, and also to, to record our friends and people that we thought were, you know, really fantastic, but, but nobody else would, would give them record deals. And uh, one of the first people that we, we had the pleasure of inviting to come and make an album with was Anna Ryder. Um, who the Fairports had the, the, the great joy of, of playing on her, her, her first album that she did with us, Pockets on Fire. She's a, an amazing songwriter, a great singer. She plays every instrument you can ever think of. And she's a, a great artist as well. Um, and here she is, Anna Ryder. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'd just like to say thank you, Peggy, for being in this world. I've got a very swingy microphone here. Look at that. It's alright, I think I've balanced it. Now, let's give Chris, Chris the hand up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and our, our religions and group sex symbol, Tristan Bryan. <laughs> Thank you. 
years ago and uh, many, many years ago when I was uh, 19 I, I played uh, with a group called the Ian Campbell Folk Group um, who, who used to have a club, the Jugger Punch at Digbeth Civic Hall. Uh, any of you go to that? Okay, it was a lot more last time, 25 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but, um, the Campbells were a fantastic group, they taught me quite a bit about traditional music, especially from Scotland, and an awful lot about whiskey and how to drink it. And, um, one, one of the great joys about the Camels was, it was, it was like the, the second biggest folk club in England. They had about 400 people there every Thursday night. Um, and they had some great people who were just coming up on, on, on the scene, you know, like people from America came there, like Paul Simon played there for, uh, for 15 quid. And, and Joni Mitchell played there for 15 quid. So Swarm tells me, and um, I don't think it will happen. It's another story. Uh, <laughs> but uh, one of the great people that, that did play there at the time, who I saw was Ralph McTell, um, who was just fantastic, Ralph then, and he still is. Um, and I, I got the chance to play on many of his albums and stuff. And uh, here he is, Ralph McTell. <laughs> I won't clear the water from here to the horizon. 
Well, a few jazz chords in there, but just, uh, <laughs> just a bit nervous uh, about getting out on stage and playing Anna's piano. You had a pianist and someone who just uses a piano, and it was me. So here's a song from way back when. Sad times that you spent, but it's over, and you met again, my old friend. And you weather the storm, you weather the storm, you weather the storm, and you come up smiling in the end. So you're over. All of this is now. You never thought you'd make it, but I know that you could somehow. And maybe it still hurts to think of sad times that you spent, but it's over. And you're back again, my old friend. And you weather the storm. His name is Brian O'Malley, and uh, he's, he's, he's just, he's been a Fairport fan for ever since I've known him, and, and a big Jethro Tull fan as well, and he's, he's, he's a great expert on, on Irish music. The name O'Malley might suggest something, he's, I think he's got origins in, in Ireland, um, and um, he's going to come and play a tune that he wrote. Um, which he's going to tell you about, Brian, and he's going to be joined by some wonderful 
a violinist, um, Mr. Rick Sanders. Mr. Tom Leary. accordion playing um, and Peggy and Chris played on that CD so here we go it starts out um, we play it as an air and then we play a little bit up tempo so here we go the hills of Chicago Electric bazooki there, that's Richie, Richie Goddard. He brought up Martin. Let's hear it for Martin. I know uh, many of you come to the Crockery Festival. Yeah. Be there August 10th, 11th, and 12th next year, you'll all be there, won't you? Yeah. Well, but apart from our event, there's, there's lots of stuff happens in Crockery. There's the fringe at the Braze Nose, which uh, we, we don't get to take part in it really because we're busy on, on the field up the road. But on the Sunday last year, on the, uh, the day after Crockery, we went down because our, our dear friend, Bo Fletcher, uh, was playing there and he said, you know, can you come along and, uh, you know, have a bash kind of thing. 
and being a moderate drinker, I was still <laughs> able on the Sunday morning after Crockery to get myself to the Braves nose, thanks to Ellen who gave me a lift. Um, and we were able to play with, with Bo, uh, along with, with Tom and with Rick and with Anna. Is that the trumpet I spotted? Yeah. Christ. <laughs> hey? Okay, and, um, and and Chris Leslie, and we had a fantastic time, and we hope, in fact, we hope to repeat it every year, don't we? So, uh, you know, a, a, a great expense, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from uh, the, the the Malvern Hills, the Malvern Hills, the wonderful Bo Fletcher. Please go. It's like playing inside a birthday cake, isn't it? Well, I guess that's appropriate. Try and get this one. You're a little obvious. There's a great big mystery. And it sure is bothering me. It's an itty my ditty. Itty my ditty. It's an itty my ditty. Won't somebody tell the white and pity what I did he win?
the clues and I think it hates from that who was over uh, from America to play at property. He was still still in the vicinity, and Paul said, will he come and play some drums with us? And it, he, Dave didn't have a kit, but kit de jour was provided for him. And uh, 
He very kindly offered to come and play on this Sunday afternoon. We played for about an hour and a half, totally unrehearsed, and um, I'm very pleased to say that Mr. Maddox is here tonight. So, yeah. We have every July, every year, we have a, a fete in, in our garden and we invite the neighbours around. We have about a hundred people and lots of people come and play. And um, the next victim that I'm going to introduce on stage, Tim Mann just happened to be over with, with his dear wife Angela with a guitar. He happened to have a guitar, so we said, right, you're on, Tim. And uh, they bought tickets for tonight and they said, I'll be coming to Dudley. I said, bring your guitar. So here he is, Tim Mann. Yeah. And then Anna's going to come and help us out as well. But the star of the show and uh, the loudest guitar, he thinks he's got the loudest guitar tonight, but I think Tim, Tim's amplifier looks a lot bigger. Um, I know size isn't everything they say, but I mean, look, compare those two. What do you reckon? So, the one and only Paul Mitchell, ladies and gentlemen. Paulie! And um, a very special surprise for us as well. We've got, we've got beauty here, but we've got, you know, we've got, we've got Sally Barker and Marion Fleetwood. For my own you come in five years as well. <laughs> so Paulie, what have you got for us? Apart from very tight pants. <laughs> it's a bit of rock and roll, I think. Yes! This is Dudley, and I love that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And nobody told Ashley, the rest of the band knew. So I'm sort of playing the harmonica, and Ashley actually says, Who's that? <laughs> and yes, the video's on YouTube, you can see him like scalping at me. Straight. <laughs> anyway, let's do some rock and roll. Let's show. rock, Dudley. Let's rock. Yeah. 
25 years ago. I don't remember much about that evening. Because um, we drank quite a lot, to be quite honest. And uh, many other, how many of you were here 25 years ago? Yay! Brilliant, that's good. And um, yeah, we had a fantastic night then. And, uh, oh yeah, you've got the paper from it, haven't you? The paper, because there's, there's an article here about uh, built own speakers. Uh, my friend John Bonham, the late lamented drummer from Redditch, you know, from Redditch. Um, I was in a group called The Way of Life, and he built some speakers for us because we didn't have enough money to buy any. And his dad owned um, a builder's yard, so John nicked all the gear from his dad's shop and built these fantastic speakers for us and covered them in orange leather with a lime green speaker cloth. <laughs> So my mate Paul, for my birthday tonight, he, he bought this amplifier, took it apart and covered it in the same colour. <laughs> Is that good or what? Paul Mitchell. He's worth it, haven't he? He's worth it. We're going to leave you with a bit of an audience participation number if you remember this one. I'd just like to introduce, uh, as, as Marianne Faithful tonight, it's uh, the lovely Marianne Faithful. And then, as Anita Pallenberg, we have uh, Sally Barker. You can dance to this.
in support. Thanks. Hey, the late Prime Minister Simon Middle. Thanks all for coming, especially the woodman folk, very good guests. Thanks guys, um, you know, and, and all of you. And the, we, we're going to play, um, the, the first track I ever played on with Fairpaws uh, was a song called um, Walk A While. <laughs> and I'm pleased to say it's still in the same key, uh, so we're going to do that for you now. Thank you.
great to have another birthday on stage. What a man. We're going to do some, uh, obviously, some Fairbody based songs now. And this is a local one. This is a, a song from just up the road, Bridge Northway, uh, from John Richards, called Honour and Praise. On a fine summer's morning, we lay at the key. The homes were filled high with the treasures of the sea, so that they could be transported by men such as we. To homeland and the queen. When the loading was done, we hoisted full sail, prayed for the winds to guide us and deliverance from gale. And the thoughts of the crew turned to home and strong ale as we cast off the ropes and set sail. For honor and for praise, sail the sea through our open days, in calm ground though you'll never lay. I'd rather die on the ocean. Thirty days out to sea, and the weather was fine. The wind that we prayed for.
70s, not my late 70s, I'm, I suppose I am really there, uh, but it was, um, it was a time when David Cyril Eric Swarbrick, let's hear it for Swarbrick. He, um, he'd had an accident, and he'd gone to see the Rolling Stones, uh, they still exist apparently, they're, they're great, the Stones, they should have had me as a bass player, I'm much cheaper. <laughs> but uh, you, you come to see the stones in, in the rush when they came on, the, the audience, you know, all ran to the front of the stage and they knocked Swarb off his, off his chair and he did his car to the gym, which meant that Simon and, and uh, who else was in the, was it DM, was DM? Bruce Bruce Roller. <laughs> <laughs> What size shoes did he take? <laughs> I was Bruce, but anyway, we were lumbered as it were, and um, you know, we'd got no income. It was like, you know, what happened in the, in the COVID thing, all that stuff, we had no... But Swab was really good to me. We lived in Crockerty, um, you know, close to each other. Swab said, Peggy, um, I can't do any gigs. Uh, but you can write some tunes, you could make some money like writing tunes. Don't write songs, he said, don't write songs. I remember your Hungarian Rhapsody. <laughs> we don't want another one of those. So I never wrote another one of those. But I wrote this tune, Bankruptured, and I've tried to introduce it every time there's a line-up change in Fairport. So when the new boys come along, because um, they're, they're not familiar with our old material. I go, I've got this great tune. And they go along with it because they think, I'm a new boy, and whatever the old boys say will go. But it's, sadly, it's been so many years now since we've had a line up change. I can't get my tune back into the, into the gig. But because it's my 75th birthday, I've, I've put it in the set. <laughs> it, it, it works for me as long as, as Rick has written the PRS thing down. So. I get my five shillings and sixpence from it. But we did, you know, in order to, to practice this tune, do it on our, our recent October acoustic kind of gigs, and it went down incredibly well. But I, I noticed that it started off with this incredible guitar introduction, which wasn't something that I wrote when I wrote the tune. Simon had obviously come up with this, this thing. Um, it, and it's pretty spectacular, but I must admit I felt a bit bad because all, all the eyes on, uh, were on him when he, when he started playing it. And then when my bit came in, they all went to the bar. <laughs> so, um, no is, pressure then? No, no pressure. And you're standing up, you <laughs> I won't say that, but... Um, <laughs> the, um, but it, it, it's gone down very well, and, and we'd like to dedicate, the tune's called Bankruptured, and we, we'd like to dedicate it to our government. <laughs>
Guinness at uh, some late night Irish bars and uh, Brian's got up and sung this song with him. We're going to get him back to sing this song. Um, he loves Richard Thompson as we all do. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this is Brian who's going to come and sing Waltz in for Dreamers with, with us all singing the chorus. Mr. O'Malley.
brilliant, but we're going to bring on the author of that very song. Back again on stage, the fantastic Ralph McTell. This is a song from 1971, maybe 72. And it was a time when um, Bob was really on his way, and there was a certain amount of confusion, especially for me, because I just adored what he'd done and what he was doing. But suddenly the world was as huge for him and uh, praise and everything. So this is a song of bewilderment. It's so that he didn't notice that it was, I, I used his original, his real name, Zoom, to kind of disguise what I was pondering. I worried that we might have fallen out in one I hadn't met him, but I felt like I knew him. But now we're friends again. <laughs>
yourself. I don't get any questions. She has to move with her family for work, for prospects, all the way over to America and their party. And the thing is, we don't know really, the song has put them back together again. That's for the sequel. But, uh, <laughs> I do this especially tonight, just before coming back on, I was looking with lovely Brian O'Malley, looking for this beautiful family. And uh, lovely two lovely girls and my wife. So I'm gonna, it's called My Love Is in America, but for Brian especially, it's My Loves Are in America. No. He'll see them soon. So, my Love Is in America.
strong man. Yeah. First step for you. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, all the way from um, West Oxfordshire, blocks and uh, but formerly from Soley Hall, <laughs> Posh Brummy, Mr. Rick Sanders is Ricky. Well, it's just great to be here, isn't it? It really is great to be here. Let's face it, when you get to our age, it's great to be anywhere. <laughs> but I must say, you know, 75th birthday. Isn't Peggy looking fantastic? Isn't he playing amazing? <laughs> Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. You can't believe he's going to have to. you can look at him when he gets back. Um, I'm catching him up quite fast, though. I am, I mean, I, 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 in a few, few weeks' time, I hit the, the biblical three score and ten, you know, the big seven over the 70th. And then, yeah, I know, and I didn't see it coming, I wasn't expecting it. It was like I was young, and then suddenly I'm not, it just had an away. You know, who knows where the, oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> so I thought, you know, with the impending birthday coming up, I thought I'd better go and see the doctor. And I managed to get an appointment, you know, and the result in itself. And, um, and I thought I'd go and just get a checkup, see how I'm doing, you know. And I was straight with him, of course, I was straight with him. I said, Doc, I'm beginning to feel my age. I looked in the mirror this morning, and my hair's getting thinner, I've got wrinkles on my forehead, bags under my eyes, sallow complexion, a bit of a double chin going on. I thought I looked terrible. Aww. He said, well, there's nothing wrong with your eyesight. <laughs> and then he pointed at me, like this, he pointed at me, and he said, Rick, you're suffering from, hy you're suffering from hypochondria. I said, no, I'm not that as well. <laughs> he said, I'm not sure about your test results. But I think it may be due to excessive alcohol consumption. I said, that's all right, I'll come back when you're sober. He's only human, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, said, I said to him, Doc, what, what I really just, it's a simple question, really, what, what I really wanted to ask you is, you know, what can I do to lose a bit of weight? He said, well, just don't eat anything fatty. I said, what, like, you know, chips, pizza, that sort of thing? He said, no, just don't eat anything fatty. <laughs> Well, by this time, as you can imagine, I'd had enough. I had had enough. I thought, I'm not stop this. I'll go and see the chiropractor. She's a lovely lady, you know. I'll be all right with her. And she is lovely. So I went to see the chiropractor. I'd only been in there less than a minute. She was going like this. She said, oh, you're all naughty. You're all naughty. I said, I haven't taken my duffel coat off yet. <laughs> so I thought, that's no good. I'll go and see, um, I'll go and see my, uh, you know, my yoga teacher. What could go wrong there? That's good, I'll go. I said, went to the yoga teacher. Well, when you wouldn't believe this when I got there, the yoga teacher was completely and totally drunk. Which put me in a very awkward position. <laughs> oh, you got that laugh, I wish you would. No. <laughs> so, I so thought I've only got one option left now, because they've just, they've got a little in blocks and there's a little medical centre, you know, it's all together in the dentist. Yeah, well, it's good. And uh, they've just, just opened a, a, a new, um, like, uh, what do you call it, acupuncture clinic. And I thought, I'll try, I'll try acupuncture, that can't do me. You know, I said, what, well, worth a try? Well, it was brilliant, brilliant. Didn't hurt at all. I came out feeling fantastic. But the weirdest thing happened. When I got home, my voodoo doll had died. <laughs> Now we're going to play a we're going to play a piece of mine now. I don't know why you've never done me any harm, but we are. And, um, and this is a piece which is uh, it's, it's influenced heavily influenced by classical music um, because I was myself classically trained up until the age of one. <laughs> now this is particularly influenced by the music of Handel. Now as I'm sure some of you know, Handel teamed up with Hinge and Bracket to form the Doors. <laughs> It's true, it's true, you know it's true. 
it's, uh, it, and it's called steampunk read because I've designed it, but one of the things it's important as you get older to try new things, to have new experiences that you've never had before, isn't it, don't you think? And I've decided I need to change my I'm going to be a, become a steampunk. I've got the top hat and the goggles, and I'm getting the rest of the clobber together. And also I made an important decision. I'm, I'm going to do it. When, I'm, when I get to 70, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a tattoo. I am, I am going to get a tattoo. Nothing over the top, just my name and address in case I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is Steam Punkery, and um, we actually asked Michael Flatley, the great Michael Flatley, if he choreographed this piece for us, but. Uh, Michael flatly refused. <laughs> so here we go. I hope you like this. You can have try. If you don't try dancing to it, you'll kill yourself. I tell you. Thank you. Rick Saunders.
CD. Yeah. Fantastic. Sadly, we haven't got any for sale tonight, but we still have a few thousand left in, in, in my garage. Uh, we, we, we recorded it and we're supposed to go out on the tour, uh, you know, but then COVID happened. And um, it's sad, we, we were selling them for a fiver each. and. Um, we haven't got any left, so uh, if you've got that CD, hang on to it, it'd be worth a fortune one day. <laughs> and it's got some great songs on it, so most of whom were composed by Mr. Leslie, young Chris here. Uh, let's hear it for Chris. <laughs> um, but then we were some, some outsiders who, who wrote stuff. Our friend in, in Nantes in Brittany, James Wood, wrote this next song, Cider Rain, um, and James is, is, is a great guy, he's written some other stuff for us in the past, and he lives in Nantes, and, and Britain is a great place, um, and you know, when it rains there, it rains cider, so uh, it's, a, it's a good place to go for a holiday. Um, so this is Cider Rain, off, off Shuffle and Go if you've got it. Um, you, you're really lucky because we've got nothing left to sell you. Okay, side so Sympathy, Douglas. Okay, that will be you. What we do? <laughs>
before I introduce this next song, <clears throat> I'd just like to say, I've known Peggy since I was about 18, and I'm getting my pension this year. <laughs> How cool is that? And I'd just like to thank him for always being encouraging, in my music anyway. He's encouraged me so much through all those years, and uh, we've been side by side for a bit now, and it's brilliant. And uh, this song is a result of all that and many other things. It's a song about space, and it's a song about the Apollo moon landings. I was a big kid that was so into it when it happened in uh, 1969. And thinking about it again on the 50th anniversary, I wasn't thinking so much about Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, who were the famous guys of that trio. I was thinking more about Michael Collins and his amazing experience when he had the first trip round the far side of the moon. He had 43 minutes or so of complete isolation. Nothing. Just himself and the universe. And this song tries to tap into that moment and it's called Moon Dust and Solitude. So beautiful, we 
And this is a song absolutely ram-packed with pungency and pithiness and observation and wisdom. Um, something far beyond where she was as an individual at the time. Very shy, uh, introverted, ex extroverted introvert. Um, very unsure of herself, very, uh, you know, just sandy. But she wrote this song full of wisdom. And, uh, it's become true with every passing birthday, especially ones with a zero on the end, isn't that true? You'll find out soon. <laughs> Oh, 
Never mind us. Great Peg, happy birthday. Yet again. And it's from Bones next year, everybody. Thanks very much. It's been a fabulous night. It's been really good. And, you know, we're, um, we're of an age now, so we, we don't go off and pretend to come back to do the encore and stuff, you know, unless we've got our phones with us because we get mark, marked up on the exercise chart and stuff. Like that. <laughs> so, can we give a big welcome, please, for, for all the people that are placing? Like Anthony, John Clark, I'll see Anthony here. And Ray Vermeer, and my granddaughter Ray Vermeer. And last thing, my grandson, and my uncle Bob. And uh, the bell to the applause, Tim Mann on the guitar. Ralph Wittell, Mr. Ralph. Brian O'Malley. Anna Wilder. Marion Cleveland. Sally Barker. Paul Mitchell. Tom Mary. Evan Thomas for doing the drinks and helping out with Leon. Leon Lewis, he did great food. Bo Fletcher. Bo Fletcher. And, um, and Rupert and the, and the staff here at Dudley Town Hall, because they've really looked after us. And, you know, let's hear it for Dudley Town Hall. <laughs> um, we, we were going to do, a, you know, my, my most popular composition, Hungarian Rhapsody. <laughs> um, we had so many requests, but sadly they were all for not to do it. So we're not going to do it. But I'm hoping that, you know, here in five years' time, we, if, if, if we can all be here, because we can learn the words. And the, the band actually learned, learned, the, learned the tracks of Hungarian Rhapsody, but, but the author didn't. Didn't <laughs> but I will get it together for, for, for you know, for, for um, whatever five years is off to November the second today, and um, I hope you'll all be here because you know you can we can all sing this song together, and we might all be able to sing this song uh, again in five years' time. But if we don't, somebody will sing it for us. <laughs> Meet on the ledge. Thank you for a great. Night.